Hey there, my name is Matt with Wearing the Rockies. My wife, Cheryl, is behind the camera. We are standing here in beautiful Grand Teton National Park. You can see the Tetons behind me here, and we're excited to share a video with you about things not to do when you visit Grand Teton. A lot of these are things that you might not think to ask or know about, so I think this list will be really helpful for you if you're a first-time visitor to Grand Teton. And the first thing is, don't worry about just driving through the park. So a lot of people are like, hey, can I just drive through Grand Teton from Yellowstone as I'm heading down south towards Salt Lake City or something like that? And the answer is yes, you can actually just drive through the park without paying a park entry fee. And that is because the main highway runs through the parks like a major artery here to get to places in Wyoming. And so there are actually two roads. There's like an outer road that goes through the park. It's actually called the outer road and it's the highway that's free to drive on. And then there's one called the inner road that goes a little closer to the Tetons and gets you to some of the main sites. That one you're going to have to pay a park fee or show your park entry pass in order to drive on the inner road. But the outer road, you can just drive through and look at those gorgeous Tetons as you drive. Hey, I'm Cheryl. I'm the other half of We're in the Rockies. And the next don't is to don't worry about reservations. This park does not have a timed entry system, and so you are welcome to come and go as long as you pay your park entrance fee. The next don't is don't plan on parking in the middle of the day. This place is nuts. The first time Matt and I came here, we didn't really know what the crowds were like. And we came in the middle of the day and we thought, oh, we're gonna go hike Taggart Lake. It was a no-go. The parking lot was completely full. There was nothing we could do. We had to move on. So then we tried Jenny Lake. Jenny Lake was completely full. It was so frustrating. And that is really common for Teton. And so if you're wanting to go to some of these really popular spots that are like hikes, go earlier in the morning or go like at dusk, three or four o'clock, these parking lots start clearing out in the middle of the day, go for drives, go for an adventure, or you can go to those lookouts. I mean, people might be at them, but at least they're coming and going. So you're not locked out of a parking spot. Just wait a second. You'll be just fine. Okay. The next thing is don't plan on getting places quickly here around Grand Teton because there is quite a bit of traffic here. So most of the traffic coming in has to go through the town of Jackson, kind of bottlenecks a little bit there in the town of Jackson, and it can take a little bit of time to get through there. Or at the end of the day, like what we've experienced quite a bit here over the last couple of days as we've been exploring, as we're heading in towards Jackson from Grand Teton here, we head into the city of Jackson, long line of cars will back up because, again, there's just kind of bottlenecks there in the little town. Um, the other thing is there's another road that goes along the mountains here that's kind of a different way to get through but it's a very narrow winding road takes quite a bit of time to drive so don't plan on getting places very quickly in fact you can see the tetons behind me here and it looks like it wouldn't take all that long to drive up to see the tetons but from where we are to get to the north end of the park is about an hour long so it's a little deceiving on the time that it takes to drive places. Um, the other thing that go along with that is don't plan on avoiding construction. It seems like there's always construction going on here. Of course, this is a winter park where, you know, you're going to get heavy snows in the winter and all that. And so the roads get kind of beat up. And so it seems like they're just always doing construction. In fact, that windy road that I talked about, it's called the Moose Wilson Road. They've been doing construction on that for the last year or two, I think. And uh, there always seems like they're doing construction in the town of Jackson. So... Just plan on, you know, plan on some extra time as you're going places. The next don't is don't think you're going to be bored. Grand Teton is so scenic everywhere you go and just some of the best lookouts there are around. And beyond that, I mean, this is a park to play. It is all about recreation. There's water sports, there's biking, there's entertainment in the town of Jackson. There's wildlife to be seen. This park it literally could entertain you for a week. It is a wonderful place to be and definitely not an afterthought to Yellowstone. Some of my very favorite things that we've done on this trip to Grand Teton is we went and checked out the Jackson Playhouse. Wow, that was such a cool experience. We actually splurged and got the dinner before and the, the actors were actually serving us and they were singing. And so we had a little bit of entertainment during dinner and then we got to see the amazing play, Annie, Get Your Gun. Other things that I just love to do every time I come here is I love to hike to the lakes. There are just these beautiful glacial lakes and they, they just snuggle up right next to the mountain range. And as you hike, you're in the prairie and then it's changing landscapes. And I love walking on that packed dirt and boardwalks. Like they're easy, so it's not too much effort. Then you get to the lake and it's just wow, because you're 
kind of at the foot of the mountains with just a lake in front of it. And it's so pretty. And I totally love to cheat at Jenny Lake and take the shuttle across the lake on that one because there's a hike at the end of it. But I love seeing Jenny Lake. And another special thing that I've done here that was so much fun was renting a bike. There's so many trails that are off the road, so they're nice and safe and they're flat. And you can just drive along through Teton. But, you know, other options are getting an e-bike where you could maybe go up some mountains or if you're wanting to go longer. But I love biking through this park. And then one last thing that I really love that I did as a child and trying to do now is I love to raft the river here. The Snake River is awesome for a scenic float. And for whitewater adventures, like there are some great rapids here and it's fun. Like I just, when I think of Teton, I think of beauty and I think of fun. Okay, so the next one is don't hit wildlife. Now, obviously you don't want to hit wildlife. And the thing is you, you really do need to keep an eye out for it. We were driving down the road just this morning, actually coming here. And there was a sign that said, I think this month alone, one bear had been hit and two moose. And I can't remember how many elk, but there's actually a sign flashing saying, slow down, please, because wildlife are getting hit in the park here. And so that's just it. That highway that goes through, people want to drive really fast. But this sagebrush area that you see, a lot of wildlife love hanging out in the sagebrush here. And then, you know, if you're driving along the river, the Snake River, that's where moose like to hang out. So, you know, really, please follow the speed limits. I'm going to jump in here and interrupt myself to illustrate this a little further. Grand Teton has the most famous grizzly bear in the country and maybe in the world. Her name is Bear 399, also called the Queen of the Tetons. She's over 25 years old, which is pretty old for a bear in the wild, and has given birth to several cubs over the years. One of these cubs, named Snowy, was hit and killed by a driver in 2016. It was a sad incident that was also quite traumatic for the community and for the legions of 399 followers. Okay, the next don't is don't plan on visiting Yellowstone in a day. I think a lot of times people do these parks together and they think, oh yeah, I can just drive up to this park, see it, and then come back. But if you do that, you might find it frustrating because you'll be in the car most of the day. The map is really deceiving for a couple of reasons. One is just that you know, you can't drive 70 out here. You're driving 45 and you're going over hills and it takes a long time. But the other one is that Yellowstone is super big and you have to drive for an hour just from the south entrance of Yellowstone to get to the Grand Loop where everything is. And so on a map, you might say, oh, well, Teton's an hour from Yellowstone, but really it's two hours because of the time in the park getting to where the things are. Now, of course, it's a scenic drive and if you're happy being in the car all day, that's okay. But you're going to be super limited on what you can see in Yellowstone if all you plan is one day. When we, we often combine this trip where we live in Utah and we come out to Yellowstone and Teton every year. And when we do that, well, it's either, since we're close, we'll either split the trips up or if we're seeing them both on one trip, we switch locations. We stay in Yellowstone and then we stay in Grand Teton, but we don't try to like go hit one or the other from the same location. And then the other thing is don't think it's as large as Yellowstone. So Yellowstone a lot of people, if you're coming out here for the first time, a lot of people just really struggle with just the size of these parks. It's hard to wrap your mind around how big these parks are, especially if you're from the east where, you know, you drive four hours, you cross four states. Out here in the west, oh, man, you drive four hours, you haven't even gotten out of the national park yet if you're in Yellowstone. So that's pretty crazy. So Yellowstone is really huge, very big. Grand Teton is much smaller. Like I said, it only takes about an hour to drive the length of the park which is still quite a bit of time for one park, but much, much smaller than Yellowstone. So you can get around here, you know, a little bit easier, cover a lot more ground than you can in Yellowstone in a shorter amount of time. Don't plan on saving money. This is like a rich skier area. Um, you know, we've heard of Jackson. Jackson is like the city with the elk antler arches, and it's really cool. But lodging there is wicked expensive. And it kind of like bleeds into the national park. It's funny that the national parks cost a different amount to stay in. But I mean, a campsite in like Utah might cost you $25 in the national park. If you go to Zion or something here, it's 50. <laughs> it's just craziness, but it is expensive. The food's expensive. The activities are expensive. And to get a hotel in town, I mean, I think you're looking at a baseline of around $400, depending on the time of year. It's just 
a pricey place to visit. Now, most people get their picture taken at the entrance park of the national park. But what I want to give from my don't is don't miss out on the opportunity to get your picture taken in front of the elk arches in Jackson Hole. Okay, the town of Jackson has these amazing elk arches. The Boy Scouts used to gather them up from the elk refuge and they build these cool arches. There's actually four of them in the town square, the little park. And that's the most iconic spot to take a photo in Jackson. So you got to do that if you're in Jackson. The last little don't is don't miss out on our Teton trip planner video. If you are planning a trip here for yourself, Matt and I have created this video that covers all the things you know to have a successful trip here, like to travel the Teton with confidence. You'll know where to stay, where to eat, all the best things to do, how to get around the park. We find it just really helps people to have an amazing trip to the West. Until next time, go West, young traveler.